Okay, let's travel back in time real quick to 2021, right before the release of Halo Infinite. There's a lot of excitement about this game. Everybody wants to play Halo Infinite, and in summer 2021, about five months before Halo Infinite releases, this strange video from a channel with 1.5 million subscribers surfaces, titled Halo Infinite Mobile Beta Version for Android Download and Gameplay Halo Game for Android 2021. What is going on here? Is Halo Infinite coming to mobile phones as well? This thumbnail? has something on it that looks new or at least different from anything we've seen before. Now, you watch the video excitedly and what is this? We see our boy Pratty walking around on what appears to be a really scuffed version of isolation maybe? <laughs> There's even some third person mode stuff going on and then later in the video he loads up on a completely different game, also Halo themed, and he's running around as a flood infected holding an assault rifle? I really am just confused looking at this. And I don't know about you guys, but it was around this point where I started to ask myself, maybe, just maybe, did we get clickbaited? Okay, backing things up a bit, this thumbnail is actually concept art for the game Anthem, which we all know how that went. And despite the title of this video, this is not in fact Halo Infinite. It's actually some random fan made Halo games for Android devices that have nothing to do with Halo Infinite whatsoever. Now, in general, Fan games can be pretty cool, especially since it seems like for the most part Microsoft's pretty chill with doing fan games as long as it doesn't use official Microsoft assets or like advertises itself as Halo, which this one kind of breaks the rules since it literally is called Halo 3 Android. And the other game that he was playing was called Halo Evolved for Android. But it is interesting to see that these things do exist, which starts to beg the question, if Halo fans are willing to go as far as creating recreations or original ideas for Halo games, what about like the Soulless Corp? Corporations that know that they can capitalize on Halo if it means that they can get some people to download the game. There's a rabbit hole here we're uncovering and it's starting with us discovering this video and then going on from there. Okay, things get wild from here in this video. Like we're gonna go into some goofy stuff. Like look at this. But real quick, just a quick reminder since we don't have a sponsor on today's video, if you wanna help support our channel, maybe you can consider filling up your gamer subs and use code ROCKETSLOTH at checkout. You get to save a little bit while you're at it. You get some cool gamer drink. Uh, it's, it is good. And that's all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna plug it too much. Let's just get right back into it. Like for instance, the way that Microsoft Store works on Xbox allows like app developers to sometimes put their games directly on Xbox consoles to be played even if they're originally made for mobile devices. Because of this, there are two Halo ripoff knockoff games that are available to play on your Xbox along with other platforms like Steam, iOS, and Android that are definitely not made by like Bungie or 343 or published by Microsoft. Oh yeah, we're looking at this combo, Spartan Firefight and Spartan Run. Now, Spartan Run was the first one I looked at and this is kind of interesting. You're essentially on this side-scrolling non-stop run where you play as what I assume to be Master Chief or a Spartan and he's running and jumping and shooting for his life as he goes through a 16-bit ish recreation of some Halo assets, which is kind of interesting. I mean, it definitely is Halo inspired, so it's not that misleading. Like these are very obviously grunts and this is a phantom and that's all Halo. The main issue someone might come to critique this game on is the fact that it probably was just like a game that was quickly rushed together. I mean, I've played a game like this before, the offline mode on Google Chrome where you're running side to side. It's essentially the same thing except shooting and then like a Halo skin over it. Now take it a step further, we try the other game, Spartan Firefight also surprisingly enough on the Xbox. And this one it looks like about the same exact game as that Spartan Run game made by the same person. And this time around, instead of it just being an auto runner or an auto scroller, it's just one where you walk and you control your movement instead. Okay, there is something cool in Spartan Firefight. They did add some vehicles like the chopper, which kind of adds a little bit of variety that does have some microtransactions. They're trying to get that money and that has some like more unlockable armor or something. So uh, a lot of the assets are just just reuse, copy and paste it, whatever, get it on the store, make a couple bucks if you can. Uh, but yeah, this one's pretty blatant about it. And for the rest of this video, we're gonna get some more that are very obviously blatant, but there's also some that are a little bit more obscure that kind of hide the fact that it's really just trying to blatantly rip off Halo, at least a little bit more than other types of games. Like this series, Nova, which came out originally in 2009. It was on iOS and the PlayStation Portable. It got two sequels. It has a remake. It's pretty much a mobile campaign and multiplayer Halo clone. Now I will be fair, 
This is definitely a game that straight up ripped off Halo and you'll see why in a second. But you know what? They were filling a gap in the market. Halo wasn't putting out a good mobile game during this time. And these guys saw the opportunity and jumped on it. But like, it's like they kind of were like, let's let's just take Halo and then like flip a couple of keywords around and just change things ever so slightly so we can kind of avoid people thinking that we're copying them. And that's where it kind of gets funny. Like not only does this game have the overtly sci-fi feel, which to be fair, Halo didn't invent sci-fi. They borrowed a ton of aspects from other franchises when Halo was becoming a thing. But I mean, let's look at the HUD. Let's look at the areas. This really does look like Cairo Station. We have a female AI girlfriend type character, Yelena, who talks to the main character throughout the missions. I mean, if you look at the gameplay for any amount of time, it definitely looks and feels like Halo. The enemies kind of look like Halo. Now, I will give them some credit. There are some unique ideas that aren't found in Halo. So that does set it apart a little bit. And I mean, they spawned a bunch of sequels and stuff. So I mean, they put some effort in with it, but the groundwork definitely was. How do we make Halo but not? Okay, what do we have next? Metal Ranger. Oof, look at the uh, the little icon right here. It definitely looks maybe a little bit Halo inspired. Maybe a little bit. Okay, now this game is a little bit different to say the least. This time around, it's a side-scrolling game, but yeah, this character literally looks like they were just trying to make a Master Chief game. And uh, you go through and you shoot some big aliens, because uh, who needs a, you know, good story or something like that. Eh, the gameplay passes at the very least, but yeah, this game alongside what they did with Nova with their marketing and obviously trying to appeal to people who, you know, think Master Chief Armor looks cool and flashy and would maybe play the game, kind of fall into the same ring here and the type of bootleg games that exist. What about other forms of media that just ripped off things from Halo directly? In China, back in 2022, there was a movie that used Master Chief in the poster. Apparently the movie is called Unstoppable. I don't think it had really anything to do with Halo at all. They just kind of thought the character maybe looked cool for the poster and threw it in. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's a thing that exists. A cool use of Halo stuff was in 2010, there was a Halo demake called Halo 2600, made by former Microsoft game publishing vice president Ed Freeze, who even got the blessing from Bungie directly to make this game. And this one's pretty cool. I mean, it's an Atari game, so you're not gonna like put a thousand hours into it, but still, it's kind of a cool thing that does exist and at least has like some significance to it. Okay, this next one is one that some of you probably actually played. And look at this, it comes from the creator of Spartan Firefight and Spartan Run, Doberman again. in the form of Halo Zero, which released all the way back in 2005. Now, the interesting thing about this is you have to have at least 256 megabytes of RAM and a one gigahertz processor if you want this game to run on your awesome PC build. Now, apparently this one was pretty cool. Like it had some levels that you could go through side scrolling, much like the firefight version we looked at earlier, except a little more old back in the day. But later on, it actually had a working multiplayer, which is obviously abandoned nowadays. And it even had a level editor, which was kind of a cool concept. Now, the big thing that was interesting besides just people looking to play Halo like on their Flash player or whatever they could play on their computer very easily back in the day, it was a big deal to play mini games on the computer way back in the early 2000s. We all know the iconic Warthog run that was featured in Halo 1 and Halo 3. It's a staple of Halo. It's got to be in every game, right? Right? 343? Even Halo 0 has a Warthog run. Now, to be fair, it is an incredibly short Warthog run. It's maybe like 20 seconds long. But you know what? You got to give it a little bit of credit for at least thinking about it and including it right here. But this game actually circulated around as proof that Halo was coming to the Game Boy Advance, which obviously was not at all ever going to happen, but you know, misinformation spread on the internet pretty interestingly back in the day. It's probably where our boy Pratik got his idea for YouTube videos. Now, going back to Halo Zero, there's a couple of interesting things to note here. Besides this gameplay that you're watching, this game actually was supposedly supposed to have a sequel called Halo Zero 2, and there were some betas for it, but the game actually ended up getting canceled and never released, and I assume the guy who was working on these ended up eventually making the Spartan Run and Spartan Firefight games instead, but yeah, we never got the Halo Zero 2. But also, Halo Zero was a project that spawned out of a different fan project, and he got permission to reuse assets from the other fan project for his own fan project. Now, the original one was called Halo Blood Covenant. Now, I'm not too sure how to get this game running, but there's a lot of footage online from like 15 years ago of people playing it, and yeah, I mean, it looks like the other types of Halo side-scrolling things we've looked at so far, except it's interesting to see how primitive this was and how it was kind of just a conceptual idea to pay 
pay tribute to Halo rather than necessarily try to knock it off in one way or another. Maybe have a little more understanding to these fan projects that are really cool and just want to pay tribute to Halo rather than like the more deceptive type of marketing. Like now, let's look at Hulo. Infinite Runner. Uh, you already can see where I'm going with this one. This game, first of all, calls itself Hulo, because it's not gonna infringe on any copyright by any means. It's totally its own unique IP, not trying to take anything from Halo, and we're driving a warthog. I mean, it is very, very bare bones here. You're just kind of driving a warthog through these infinite levels, and they use the infinite, obviously, to try to, you know, get the extra clicks from Halo Infinite being relevant, and I mean, it's somewhat inspired maybe by the last level of Halo 3, but still, it's definitely just a desperate attempt to kind of make bank on Halo Infinite's popularity and the fact that they sell an ad free version or you can pay money to get more lives eh, a little bit less of a hey here's a fun tribute project for the fans and more of how can I capitalize on my little quick game I threw together also I just really really don't like the HUD here like these arrows for controlling it just I mean he literally just typed a icon on the keyboard there was there was nothing no design choices considered here okay what about triple a developers because there's a meme that had circulated pretty much since call of duty infinite warfare released that it was trying to steal from halo and to be fair while call of duty infinite warfare has a pretty good campaign and obviously it was doing something unique going into this like huge sci-fi direction not only did they take massive chunks of inspiration from the halo universe and they even threw some homages into the halo universe as well kind of showing some respect for the franchise there are some things that were definitely just straight up kind of taken right out of Halo and it is kind of funny to look at. Now one of my favorite fan theories I've heard when it comes to Call of Duty Infinite Warfare is that if they just you know flipped a couple of words around this would have made for an absolute banger of a prequel game to Halo if it was like canonized but instead it wasn't. But look at this we have things like a pelican in the campaign the rocket launcher looks eerily similar to Halo 5 Guardians Halo 5 rocket launcher this side-by-side -side image just looks also eerily similar Similar. I mean, some of the armor in some cases looks kind of like George from Halo. I don't know. There's a ton of little references. I used to joke that this female character in the trailer kind of resembles Miranda Keys, which fair, just like a marine outfit or whatever. But you got to stop and think like they were obviously taking a couple of cues here and there from the Halo franchise. Apparently, there's even a multiplayer map in this game that takes place on a ring world, which is incredibly cool in a way. I don't know. I think the fact that they still paid homage to Halo in naming some of like the weapons like little halo references like spartan or something makes this mostly okay because it acknowledges halo's contribution to the sci-fi genre but we also have to realize once again halo didn't invent sci-fi fps shooters still i can't help but to look at call of duty infinite warfare and be like yeah this game was very heavily inspired by halo and some people are definitely going to call this one a ripoff nonetheless because no matter how you cut it up if you're a fan of call of duty it is a victim of this like yearly cycle which is like this absolute machine that just like pushes content out and it just makes billions of dollars. I don't know. I feel like what I'm trying to say is that Call of Duty's reputation in general has kind of cannibalized itself. So no matter what, there's always going to be the people pointing out that Call of Duty just like stole stuff from Halo, even if it's not really fully the case. Still, the map throwback is pretty cool. And you know what? Call of Duty Infinite Warfare definitely does get a bad rap. 100%. Activision should not have thought to release a third advanced movement game in a row after Advanced Warfare and Black Ops 3. Like there was already a lot of burnout and they should have been able to predict that the three year cycle on games would eventually have some people tired of the advanced movement. If this game would have released either initially as one of the first advanced movement games or they would have held off on it for a few years and released it later on, I think it would have been a pretty popular Call of Duty game. I mean, the multiplayer, love it or hate it, whatever. The campaign was pretty decent actually and zombie mode was incredibly fun, at least that like Spaceland zombies. I'm getting off track here. I think this game more than anything could have been its own IP outside of Call of Duty. It didn't really have any relation to the Call of Duty games other than a little Easter egg here and there. It feels more like a Halo game. I'm impressed by this. I mean, we haven't had a real Halo game in how long? I mean, speaking of this list of knockoff games, why don't we include Halo 4? Actually, I don't want the comments. It's okay, it's okay. I'm joking. Halo 4 is an okay game. It's not really all that bad. I just like to you know, jab at it. Okay, now look at this. Armscraft FPS. This game has to be taken 
taken some inspiration from Halo. Look at the little icon picture. Look at this screenshot that's used as the first picture you see when you pull up the store page. Now, probably a mix of Halo and maybe like Minecraft or something is being pointed out here. And the description is to craft your own weapons and kill them all. Dang. Okay, so to be fair, when it comes to games that kind of take inspiration or art style directions or use some technology that was kind of originated from Minecraft, and I mean, think about all the Minecraft clones that have existed over the years. Sure, it can be incredibly hard to stand out against the hundreds of other clones in the genre. So what do they do? Boom, they slap another iconic character on the cover of the game to make whatever game they were working on stand out a little bit more uniquely. Now, I think the game itself probably doesn't get updates that too often, especially since the game only has four ratings. So I don't think this was like a huge master success. It's pretty much just a Minecraft knockoff with some weapons in it. There's a ton of other games that do the same exact concept, but do it a whole lot better than Armscraft FPS. But uh, yeah, they, they, they didn't even hide the fact that they were just stealing stuff straight from Halo, or at least trying to use Master Chief to get a little bit of extra clout on their side. Okay, now for this next one, we talked about it in our Halo Killers video, mainly because we never really thought that we'd ever make a bootleg knockoff Halo video like this, but the games The Conduit, which released on the Wii and were exclusive for Nintendo Wii consoles, definitely were just trying to take the idea of Halo and bring it to Nintendo consoles so players who wanted to play a game like Halo would have something to play and they knew that they could capitalize on it. I would say this game counts more as a ripoff than a quote unquote Halo killer like we talked about in our other video, which by the way, if you haven't checked it out, check it out at the end of this video. But think about it. You're like a young 13 year old kid and you have a Wii and all your friends are playing Halo and you wish that you could play Halo and be a part of it. And then you go to the store and of course Halo's not on the Wii, but the conduit is. And this game did have online. It did have multiplayer, it had 13 competitive modes. You could play deathmatch and free for all and a couple of other team-based modes. You could play with 12 whole people simultaneously. And uh, if you were back in the early days of the Wii, you could even use the Wii Speak device that had come out in 2008. It sounded completely terrible. Like it was the worst thing ever, but it did support voice chat. So you could have that like classic Halo feel, but on the Wii. Now, if you weren't around during the Wii days, you probably don't maybe comprehend the significance of like voice chat and online play back in like the late 2010s. It was just becoming a popular thing at the time. Xbox Live was just blowing up. Modern Warfare 2 had just come out. Halo 3 had been out. And Halo kind of started that trend of like multiplayer games where you talk to each other and then boom, the conduit comes out and is trying to do the same thing, but on the Wii. Now, ultimately a big problem when it came to the Wii was the fact that the graphics on the Wii were kind of inferior to like the Xbox 360 and PS3. Uh, the gameplay, you know, uh, they struggled to set the goal for 30 frames per second with no flicker, which, you know, it's not 60 FPS, but I mean, it, it could run. It wasn't like an old stop motion film. And hey, the game obviously sold well enough for a second game to be greenlit in The Conduit 2, which would see some development issues, but eventually would release in 2011 on the Wii. I think The Conduit 2 maybe didn't do as well because we never saw a Conduit 3 in any form whatsoever. It's probably because around the 2011 times, the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 were more affordable and people could just play like the real Halo on the Xbox 360. I don't know, at that point, people just wanted to play Call of Duty. So not much more would ever come from the Conduit series. It would eventually get an HD remake in 2013 for Android, which was kind of crazy. And then the company would go on to become one of the developers for Fortnite. Okay, then we can go into the wild and wacky world of Roblox knockoffs when it comes to Halo. Now there's this one that's called Delta Ring and our buddy Arash has covered it a little bit on his channel. It actually is kind of a true to form Halo inspired game just built into Roblox, which is really cool that that even exists. But then there's other servers that really just take knocking off Halo to a new level. There's this one where there's a bunch of like ODSTs on the front cover and then you get in the game and it's not even a real game. You just kind of walk around for a bit and like they try to bait you into buying Robux or spending Robux. So that's cool. There's this game that just once again tries to popularize itself off of the idea of Halo and then there's just like nothing Halo related in it whatsoever. Roblox is probably the worst offender of this. I'm really surprised they haven't had like a 
massive crackdown on copyright stuff just with you can just put whatever you want into Roblox. I know like Nintendo's come and hit them a couple of times making them like take off some references to like Pokemon and Mario and I don't see too much Disney stuff probably for the same reasons. I feel like those two companies are like no 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 Roblox we will shut you down we will sue you. Microsoft doesn't care. Go ahead use Master Chief and an Obby Lobby if you feel like it and we get games like this and uh that's pretty incredible, I would think, to say the least. Okay, then, when we're talking about just cheap knockoffs, what about the Halo television series? You know what, I'll stop while I'm behind. All right, thanks for watching. <laughs> well, this is a terrible way to end the video. Anyways, uh, thanks for all the support, guys, especially the people on Patreon. We're making some weird videos here, and we're having a blast doing it. And if we didn't have, you know, you guys throwing some extra money our way, well, we wouldn't be able to make the videos that we do. So we really appreciate you guys. If you guys want to join in and throw a few bucks our way, check out our Patreon. Also, make sure you subscribe with notifications on for more videos like this because you're not going to want to miss anything that we put up. So yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time with a new video.